Welcome, and thank you for joining us today for the Adobe Creative Cloud for Nonprofits webinar brought to you by CCB. Before we get started, let's go over a couple of housekeeping items. First, the webinar is being recorded today and will be available next week for you to access along with the slide deck. Also, everyone will be muted throughout the presentation to eliminate any noise distractions, but we will be taking questions through the question area on the right side of the screen. Please make sure that the questions are being sent to all panelists so everyone can see the questions and responses. We'll answer as many as we can along the way as we go. CCB is celebrating our 25th anniversary this year, and we were founded to help nonprofits obtain special pricing on all of their IT needs. We've partnered with Adobe since our beginning because Adobe has actively supported nonprofits by offering discounts on tools that make life more creative, enabling you to get your unique message heard. CCB also has an Adobe specialist, Patty, who's been with CCB for nearly 20 years and is our in-house expert on Adobe products to assist you in finding the right fit for your organization. In addition to Adobe, CCB offers a wide variety of software, hardware, managed services, and IT project services to help you do more with what you have. You can learn about our commitment to nonprofit organizations and all of the solutions we offer at www.ccbtechnology.com or talk directly with your CCB account manager. Okay, let's welcome our speaker, Elaine Besh. Elaine is part of the Adobe Channel sales team, and uh, in her role, she leads partnerships between Adobe and key partners like CCB who help deliver Adobe solutions to customers. Elaine has a strong focus on the nonprofit and education sectors over the past five years. So Elaine, let's go right ahead. Great, thanks so much, Don, and um, welcome to everybody today. Um, and happy birthday to CCB Technologies. I had forgotten, Don, that, um, wow, 25 years, certainly impressive. Goes by quickly. Yes. So, um, yes, as, as Don mentioned, our nonprofit customers are near and dear to Adobe's heart. We realize that, you know, what you do is critical to our state, local, and national community. So we recognize that, obviously, you need to be um, – very practical and prudent with the the funding that you that you do have. So we recognize uh, certainly the the constraints and, um, we, and our mission is our part of our mission is to help make our products affordable and accessible to nonprofits. And in doing so, um, as Don mentioned, we we do offer or we allow nonprofits to purchase under our education program. So I'm thrilled to be here today. As as Don mentioned, I. Um, I work in both the education and the nonprofit segments at Adobe and um, really love my job because um, our tools are amazing. Um, we have amazing customers and then partners like um, CCB who really help us reach you, our customers. So today, I'm gonna, our, our session today will be just about an hour. My presentation will take maybe a little bit over 30 minutes. Um, we'll, leave a lot, we'll allow some time for, for Q&A at the end. What we'll be doing, I think Don mentioned in the Q&A pod, you can ask questions as, as we go along. But at the end, we'll, um, we'll read out um, some of the most common questions that will be relevant for the whole, the whole team today. So in starting, I want to take a little bit of a step back and, and speak about what, what we refer to at Adobe as the design advantage and, and just talk about how that um, – um, how, how critical design is in helping our customers, whether they're in the nonprofit space or commercial or education, really reach their audience in a compelling way. And that ties in with Creative Cloud. So I'll, I'll um, provide an overview on um, Adobe Creative Cloud. I know many of our audience members today are still using older versions um, of our creative tools, Creative Suite, like different versions of Creative Suite which um, CS6 was the last version that Adobe offered under the Creative Suite product family, and it's now, I believe, about four, going on five years old. So a lot has changed, and so I'll, I'll, I'll really um, sink into an overview here. And then the program, or the way that you order Creative Cloud is through the Value Incentive Plan, or VIP. So I'll give just a few details on that, and then cover high level, just um, programs and pricing. And then we'll move on to Q&A. So when we, we talk about design um, and, and the world that we're living in today, this crazy, um, this crazy world of mobile you know, device proliferation 
And as you as designers um, are doing your best to reach your audience, having to design in this environment and really compete with um, everyone else who, who's trying to reach um, either whether it's your donors or the communities that you serve. And so we see design as really becoming a competitive advantage for firms that have a design mindset, um, whereas historically design was often sort of relegated as a nice-to-have, artistic, you know, um, sort of marginal um, enterprise in a way. Design for many organizations now, as they're working to have a, a very strong and compelling digital presence, is becoming more and more critical. So, and that, and that we find that's true in talking to customers, whether they're in the commercial space, nonprofit, even government, um, who's trying to reach their constituents. And so, technology has really flattened the competitive landscape because, um, you know, most most organizations can can put up a website or you know, certainly come up with um, mobile apps and so forth and have different ways of reaching their customers, but it's really the design element that that helps you stand out. And so or, more and more organizations are, are reinventing themselves digitally in order to, to provide those um, engaging experiences. And so we refer to all this as the design advantage, and Adobe's products, Creative Cloud, really fits into that pivotal space between technology and design. So um, Adobe, you know, has offered our, our industry-leading creative tools for quite a number of years, and our mission is to help our customers um, change the world through digital experiences using our products. So just about every um, image that you look at, maybe driving into work, whether it was a billboard that you that you glanced at, a magazine that you might have read, um, certainly a website or an app that you might have uh, taken a, a, a look at, was touched um, in most cases by an Adobe product, whether it was Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, if it were a print piece, or for video, Premiere Pro and After Effects. So our tools are, um, are, are used everywhere. And um, this is where Creative Cloud really comes into play. So a definition of Creative Cloud is um, it's a create, we define it at Adobe as a creative platform that includes all of the industry leading creative applications that you've probably come to know and love over the years, um, products like Photoshop, Illustrator, Dreamweaver, um, Premiere Pro for video, Acrobat. So all of those desktop applications um, are available through Creative Cloud, but it also includes a host of online services. So online tools that really enable mobile apps that enable you to our customers to really design and work anywhere and distribute and share their their creative projects. It includes um, another service is cloud storage. So under um, Creative Cloud for Teams or Creative Cloud for Education, since our nonprofits purchase under education, we call it Creative Cloud for Education. Storage is available and a host of collaboration tools. In fact, some of you might be familiar with um, a site called Behance, which um, is a way for creative professionals actually to share their portfolios and share their work and actually market their work. And then um, Adobe Expert Services are also part of the online services. So one point I want to make is when you, um, when you license or you become a member of Creative Cloud, the, the desktop applications, are they're not streamed through the cloud. There, there have been a lot of questions that we've gotten um, over the past year or so about that. They're actually deployed onto your desktop. So um, just to point that out. But Creative Cloud is, again, a platform that gives you everything that you need to, to do your work as a creative or oftentimes for small organizations as um, with many nonprofits. Um, sometimes there are very few people in the office, and so um, the creative uh, person might actually be even the director of the, of the nonprofit. So we realize that you wear many hats, but um, the Creative Cloud enables you, obviously, to have the desktop applications, the mobile app. So again, you can literally snap a photo, um, maybe when you're on your way into work or sitting in the, in the coffee shop, um, something might inspire you. 
um, you can actually start working at working on that um, project or that concept at wherever you are. You upload it um, through Creative Cloud, you know, ultimately back to your desktop where you'd work on it and refine the project in using Photoshop or Illustrator, depending on what you're trying to do. Um, and also the ability within the cloud to manage your creative assets. So you probably have certain um, color schemes that you use and templates and so forth. So Creative Cloud provides that ability to, um, which really helps with productivity, to, to manage your creative assets. And as far as Marketplace, I'll talk about it a little bit um, later in a couple of slides. Um, we offer, um, we've added stock, Adobe Stock, so 53 million um, stock images, photos and graphical images that you can incorporate all within the environment of Creative Cloud into your work. So the products that are included in Creative Cloud are all, again, the, the 14 or so um, industry-leading desktop applications that have been available if you were in the past using Creative Suite or CS. Um, basically, it was Master Collection. CS offered different um, collections of products, and Master Collection included, depending on the you know all the workflows. So whether you were working in a design slash print workflow, focused on web with products like Dreamweaver um, or video. Um, you had access in, with Master Collection to all of the all of the tools, and um, this is the case for Creative Cloud. We offer Creative Cloud is either a complete offering, so that includes access to all of these 14 applications, or if you have a team that only needs um, one, you know, perhaps only Photoshop, you can also um, license as a single app any any of the products as a single app, Ex with the exception of. Acrobat, we do offer through the VIP program, but if you're licensed as a Creative Cloud user, you cannot license Acrobat as a single app under Creative Cloud, and also Lightroom. And, and these are some of the, I'm not going to dive too deeply into the online services just because, you know, in the interest of time, but I'm going to recommend that you just go to adobe.com and um, dig into some of the, the really cool mobile apps that are available. So for, for those of you, my understanding is a lot of the audience today is, is on an older version of CS. And so um, some of the highlights of Creative Cloud, which has now been out for, um, it was introduced in about 2012, um, some things that you might be missing if, even if you're on um, CS6, which is now about, uh, about four years old, is um, some, you'll, in, in one of my other, my next slides, I have some actual details of the different um, features that are available. But we use the term Adobe Magic. So um, if some of you remember when we introduced um, Photoshop and it had the healing brush tool, it was an amazing, just an amazing advancement um, that helped you accomplish, our customers accomplish a lot with just a, a click of a button. So there's, there's new Adobe Magic probably um, available if you're on an older version of our product. So we'll go through some of those um, in a couple of slides. But then also um, certain products, for example, InDesign and Illustrator are literally 10 times faster um, than CS6. So really taking advantage of um, the technology that's built into the hardware today and the, um, the graphics engines that are available. So it's about 10, 10 times faster, and the, also the ability to connect um, to mobile and desktop apps. So again, enabling a workflow where your creative team can work anywhere and um, share assets and projects. And one of the, the key technologies that makes this collaboration and sharing possible is a tool called Creative Sync. So um, this is all new in Creative Cloud. And so just a quick run through, there are something like a thousand new features available in Creative Cloud relative or uh, compared to Creative Suite. Um, obviously, we won't have time to run through every single new feature, but we do have a link on Adobe.com where you can you can literally check that out in each of the each of the um, applications. 
So for graphic design, um, where InDesign and Illustrator are critical, performance is really the key, about 10 times faster than CS6. And so if you're on an even older version, um, I think you'll be really thrilled to see what you can do um, you know, from a productivity standpoint. And in the web space, where Photoshop is very much an anchor product for mobile and web, being able to design multiple artboards in a single document has come in very handy for our creative customers. And in video, um, we've dramatically simplified color workflows. I mean, color is such, uh, it's obviously so critical in any workflow, but in, in video, it's been especially challenging. So um, providing new tools to allow you to really manage your color and then focused on photography, um, Photoshop and Lightroom, um, some of the Adobe magic I was speaking about, um, the ability, it's called dehaze, a dehaze tool, the ability to just with, a, with one button remove haze from a photo. So again, something that could have been done in earlier versions, but it would have taken many more, taken many more steps. And the healing brush that I mentioned earlier, is about 120 times faster. So I think you're going to see overall just um, much better productivity and performance if you are using a you know an older version of the creative tools. So um, some of the audience might have read some information about Creative Cloud for education, and I want to point out um, that for educa specific to education because of classroom use, we do offer something called device licensing. And that's for an environment where literally you're teaching a class, and some of our nonprofits might actually have, you know, some um, a setting where you're teaching a class to students. It's um, it's basically uh, the product is available. It's deployed to the desktop, and so there's no login required. It is only the desktop applications, because the whole purpose is for the applications to be taught in a classroom setting. Whereas the named user version that you see here obviously um, gives access to all of the, um, the desktop apps that we mentioned, but it has the um, access to all the, the collaboration, to all the services, so storage, the, um, all the tool, the mobile apps. It also includes what we call work at home rights. So if you have team members that, that do need to work from their personal computer, they would simply log in. So for named user, the way that it works is, um, each user is set up with an Adobe ID, so they log in, and then that, that seat is assigned to them. Now, if down the road they, they move on to another employer, they leave your organization, that seat can be obviously redeployed to, to the new, um, your new employee. So that's the difference between um, the device licensing and named user. So in um, just a quick summary of the benefits of Creative Cloud for our nonprofit customers. Um, you get access to all of Adobe's leading, industry-leading desktop applications. Um, you see here, it says for teachers and students, but obviously in, in your space it would be for your um, creative teams. And again, um, they would have access to the whole set of tools. You might have some team members who are only focusing on web, and so those would be the, t the tools that they would deploy. Whereas others might, I mean, we find most creatives are working in all different um, workflows. So if you're working in web, you're probably also, you're obviously, you know, um, using Photoshop and, and working with photos, but are likely um, also working with video. So Creative Cloud is available through a program, again, called the VIP or Value Incentive Plan, which provides you, in, in a couple of slides, I have a, um, I have a, a quick view of the administrative console, but it's a web-based administrative console that allows you to easily manage the seats that you've, um, that you've purchased. And it gives you budget predictability. It is a, a term licensing program. The um, default or the standard term is um, annual, um, though we do allow um, nonprofit and education customers to purchase, say you have budget today for it, you can purchase actually up to four years or 48 months in advance, um, but it gives that, pr that budget predictability where you, you get set up in VIP, you um, purchase new, a new seat your first year, and the next year you will come up for renewal. 
and then it's a it's a flexible um, licensing model that that we've actually gotten very good feedback um, from our customers on. And so just a, a quick summary of um, top reasons to upgrade to Creative Cloud if you are using an older version of Adobe's creative products. Um, number one, you're going to be thrilled with the creativity that's, a, that's enabled with Creative Cloud. Um, just all the amazing new features that you're going to find um, that are available now. Productivity is um, a big driver. Um, not only nonprofits, but certainly our customers in the commercial space are pressured more and more to do more with less. I mean, to to produce more, um, and especially with all the mobile devices that they're having to reach customers through, it provides. I mean, it really creates a bit of um, pressure for creatives. So, Creative Cloud really enables um, the ability to provide or produce your creative work much quicker. Um, it's easy to manage um, seats. Again, if you it's uh, using the VIP administrative console, um, being able to um, keep track of who is assigned um, to which seat, and then make changes if you need to. And mobile is huge, and that's a huge component of Creative Cloud: the ability to design for a, um, a mobile audience. You don't know if um, your customers or your your donors are going to be looking at, at your information over your website or through a mobile app. Um, and so all the tools that allow you to, to be able to design in that kind of environment. And ultimately, it reduces costs. I mean, a big, um, big part of the cost is reducing uh, the time to market So and being able to, with a, a relatively small staff, produce some amazing, compelling creative work which at, at the end of it all helps you um, better reach your audience. And so I'm going to say a few words about Adobe Stock. Um, most of our creative um, customers are accessing, you know, um, being able to buy stock images is, is really critical to their creative workflow. So Adobe, um, we actually found that something like 90% of our Creative Suite customers were having to actually exit Creative Suite and choose, you know, which stock images they were going to to use for their project, and there was a lot of um, back and forth. And so we have introduced um, Adobe Stock. You, it can only be um, purchased if you're a Creative Cloud named user um, customer. So for a device license, it's it's not available, but um, it's part of the named user offering. And it's about 53 um, million images, high impact um, images that are available for your projects. Um, the real beauty is that it's, in great, it's integrated with our desktop application. So as you're working on a project within Creative Cloud, you don't have to leave the Creative Cloud environment to, um, to take a look at you know, the samples of um, stock that you might want to use and or images that you might want to use and ultimately to license them. So just to, I have a quick um, rundown because our creative customers have been so thrilled about this, I just thought I'd, I'd sort of um, walk you through a bit of how the process works. So the first thing is you launch Adobe Stock within your Creative Cloud library. So once you're a member of Creative Cloud, which we, um, in a couple of slides, actually have a slide that, that shows you how you can purchase Creative Cloud with Stock, so as a bundle. Um, so here we're launching it within Photoshop, create, um, Photoshop CC. Um, you enter whatever your search terms are. In this case, they're looking for a hiker in Nepal. And at that point, you're, um, you have access to all the images. Very easy to see what's available. And um, within, and again, you're, you're still within Creative Cloud. You save your, the image that you want to select. It's watermarked at that point. Um, and you um, would save it into your Creative Cloud library, which again is one of the one of the tools available in um, Creative Cloud named user. You go back to Photoshop. Um, you save the image. Um, you might you might decide that you want to even make some edits. I, I think in this case they actually work with the coloring a bit. Um, yep. There, so we're adding an effect where they're um, going to be lightening up the color. 
And so here you can see the, the sky is brightened and the watermark, um, it, it is applied to both the watermark, the watermarked preview. And at that point, um, you license the image from the Creative Cloud library. So the whole transaction happens within the Creative Cloud environment. And we found our, this has really benefited our customers. I think when we, um, when we first launched Adobe Stock, it was uh, a little over a year ago, um, we had about 40 million images available at that time. And um, at last count, it's about 53 million now. And here it just shows the final, the final layout with the, the high-res version available. And um, all the effects are automatically applied. So I'm going to move on to purchasing programs and just run through a little bit about the, um, the different ways to purchase Creative Cloud and also um, the VIP program, which is how you actually place an order. So one quick note, um, for our nonprofit customers, Adobe offers two licensing vehicles. One is the Transactional Licensing Program, or TLP. So if you're currently using products like Acrobat Pro, Photoshop Elements, Premiere Elements, Captivate, Presenter, some of those products, they are still available through the TLP Education um, Pricing Program. So that, that program still exists. Um, you obviously can't purchase any of the creative products under the TLP program. Um, the creative, all of our creative products, Creative Cloud, and now Acrobat as well, are available through the value incentive plan. And again, as I mentioned, um, Creative Cloud has two, two different types. Named user is, includes all the services, including access to Adobe Stock. And device license is really more, more geared for a classroom environment. So I think one thing to point out is just a reminder of um, what the pricing would, would be. As a, if you were a commercial customer, the annual price um, for Creative Cloud Complete is around $840 per seat per year. Um, comparing that to education slash nonprofit pricing, um, the VIP program is a, a tiered program based on the size of your order. So the first tier um, would start for named user at $420 annually, so half of what you pay in the commercial space. And then tier four, which currently requires a, an order of 1,000 seats, which I recognize is, is pretty high, but it's two, it goes down to $252 annually per user. And then for device license, again, it does not include the services, so um, the price um, is $300 at uh, VIP level one and $180 or roughly that um, for VIP level four. And these, these are Adobe's suggested list prices, so you, you absolutely want to work with your CCB account manager to get an actual price quote. And so a real quick um, run through of the Adobe Stock plans and pricing. So um, Adobe Stock in education can be purchased along with um, Creative Cloud com Complete. So all, again, all the applications um, for roughly 61.08 per year. And then um, it can also, if you are a named user, customer. So you've already, say, in the past, you've purchased Creative Cloud named user. Um, you can purchase Adobe Stock as standalone subscription, and um, it, the, it comes in two different um, versions, 10 images per year or 750. And so just a, a few comments about um, the VIP plan. So the first thing that happens is you, as an organization, as a customer, you have to enroll in VIP. Um, CCB, your partner, um, kicks that process off by actually um, going into the system. So they actually have a console that they manage for their customers. And the first step is they invite you to um, join VIP. 
and once they once they send out that invitation, it you you receive an email, and you um, review the VIP terms and conditions. At that point, you click um, to accept, and then you're set up with a VIP agreement number. So that's really how the, the whole process starts, and that's what gives you access to your VIP administrative console. Um, you can actually set up a primary, um, m most of our customers set up a primary administrator, but have one or two secondary administrators, so you can certainly add administrators if, um, if you want to do that, but it, that's how you um, purchase and deploy your licenses. Um, there's no minimum purchase requirement for the program, um, so it just gives you, it's, this is how you have access to your, the seats that you've purchased and also help you track um, renewals as they come due. So some of the benefits of the VIP program is, um, again, as we, as we mentioned, it allows you to, uh, as an organization really to manage your software assets, so um, enabling you to add and remove licenses to fit um, what your organization will need. Um, there's no no separate you know negotiation involved. It's it's um, very straightforward. Where the contract you just purchase under that program, it's an evergreen agreement. By the way, so um, it's not like you have to sign a new. You have to enroll again every year. Now the seats will need to renew, so you have you'll have to purchase a renewal um, order every year. But it's it is an evergreen agreement. And it enables transactional purchasing, so you, you purchase as you need. Um, and then the, the, the console is a, is a key part of the VIP program. So again, as I mentioned, the, de, the default um, subscription term for VIP is one year. Um, that's paid up front. Sometimes you'll hear us talk about monthly charges. In fact, I think my Adobe stock um, uh, slide that I covered previously, that was actually a monthly um, amount. Um, so oftentimes you'll, you'll hear us talk about monthly, but a subscription is annual. And if you have, um, when you set up your VIP agreement, all of your seats are going to co-term. So if you set up your agreement today, it'll go roughly, you know, it'll be from today until next year. You might have users that need to join in to Creative Cloud or add seats mid-year. So in that case, you would order prorated. So you'd order, um, if it were halfway through, you'd order a six-month duration for that particular seat because it's going to coincide with, um, you know, uh, the end of the VIP term. Um, again, if you have the budget and it works better for you, we do, we do allow for education and nonprofit customers an extended subscription. So up to 48 months can be paid in advance. I'm not going to cover VIP Select um, today just because it's a bit of a detail that would take additional time, but we do have a, a program that um, once you hit a certain amount of seats, number of seats over time, it can actually help you recognize um, better discounts, and um, you, can, you can choose to um, take advantage of those and, and pay for three year, up to three years um, at that discount when you reach that. So here is a view of the administrative console for VIP, so just giving you an idea of how it's laid out. So you can see it enables you to, to actually look at the, the different the status of the different seats that you have um, out there or that you've invested in, and um, it's within this console that you would actually, um, if you needed to redeploy a seat, you could do that. It also gives you status of, I mean, the way that it works is um, when you have a user that you're supporting um, within your organization, you actually invite them to um, Creative Cloud and that's how they take advantage of their seat. So in this, in this situation, you can see there are a couple of um, users where the invitation has been sent, and maybe they haven't um, activated their seat yet. So it, just, it gives you status there. There are um, different tools available um, within the console as well. But just a quick point about the named user. Um, the named user version of the licenses, each of the users can, they have access to all of the Creative Cloud applications, though um, 
they don't they, they don't have to deploy all of them, but they'll once they're invited and they accept the invitation, they they choose which they're going to download to their to their desktop. And there are a number of deployment tools which probably come into a bit more of play um, if you're if you're opting for the device license offering. So just a quick note, I mean, if you are in a situation where um, the device license offering is um, the, the model that works best for you, there is a utility, a tool called Creative Cloud Packager that actually allows you to build that pack, uh, that that package for that classroom or lab. It's usually in an education environment that we're doing that. So you might have one class where you're really focused on the, the video products, and so you would build a specific package, and that's what Creative Cloud Package, Packager enables you to do. And this um, Deployment Tools tab will walk you through that. So I'm um, close to finishing, but just wanted to cover some of the resources that we have available. So a host of... Um, learning tools, but most, um, most critical, especially for our education customers who are often choosing the, the um, classroom or lab, the device license offering, where there is some deployment, um, some deployment details involved. We offer a um, biweekly e-seminar called, um, it's called a Getting Started e-seminar to really walk our customers through um, getting up and running and deploying. There are a host of support materials available at, um, at this link that you see here, helpx.adobe.com. And Adobe TV is an amazing resource for just learn, learning products, and it offers all kinds of tutorials. So um, there's, we, we'll be sending out, as Don mentioned, the, the slide deck when we finish today. So um, you might want to go to some of these links and check out these, these various offerings. Training videos are also available. And so for next steps, I'm going to turn it over to Don. Okay, great. So thank you, Elaine. That, that, was, that was very helpful. Um, so you can download some of uh, the Adobe Creative Cloud um, resources at uh, ccbtechnology.com slash adobecc that you see there. Um, the other thing, if you have any questions, please contact your CCB account manager or our in-house expert, Patty, to find the right licensing option for your, uh, for your organization. And uh, be sure to take advantage of the nonprofit pricing uh, by enrolling in the VIP, uh, VIP program. And again, your sales rep can help you with that. So, Lane, we did have a couple of questions. Um, you mentioned that you don't stream the products through the cloud, but can you explain how to access, say, for instance, Photoshop through the Creative Cloud? Yes. So um, that question has come up quite a bit from, from customers. Um, so the way that it works, um, if you have a customer or a, a user who you're supporting and they, you know, I'm assuming they would be choosing the named user offering, once they, the way the process works is once the, actually the order doesn't even have to be placed yet, you invite them to Creative Cloud, they accept the invitation, um, they, at that point, they'll receive an email giving, linking them, basically directing them to Creative Cloud where they, uh, they set up a, an Adobe ID, they log in, and at that point they choose which applications they're going to download to their desktop. So they're, at that point they're within the Creative Cloud environment and they, they literally um, download um, Photoshop to their desktop. Okay, great. Uh, another question, um, if I have a license assigned to one of my employees and they leave, what, what happens to that seat? Do I lose that? No, not at all. That, in fact, that's the, um, the big advantage of the VIP console is um, at that point, you know, the, the employee departs and um, you you could, you redeploy that seat to another another user, and obviously, if that first employee then tried to um, you know get into Creative Cloud, they would they would not have access. Okay, great. Uh, another one: um, Can employees use the software from their personal computer? Are they allowed to install it on their personal computer, and would they have access to the Creative Cloud from their home? Yes, one of the benefits for Creative Cloud. Um, education, which is uh, the model that we, the, or the program that we use for nonprofits as well, 
is the ability to offer work at, what we call work at home rights? So the answer is yes. Um, and whether it was um, a, a user, a creative team member at a nonprofit, or perhaps even faculty at an education, you know, at an institution, yes, they uh, would log in uh, from their home computer, and they would also be able to deploy. Photoshop or whatever products they they needed to have access to, and also access all their um, you know their projects so that they might have stored within the Creative Cloud storage, which is available. Um, so many people work. Obviously, I mean, very few people work. I think every day from their office. So it really enables that mobile that mobile um, work environment. Okay, great. Um, Another one question that, that just came in, uh, with stock options, one has to include copyright info in publications uh, and on one's website. Is the copyright information provided with each stock image? Yes, it is. Okay, great. That's a really important point, yep. Fantastic. Um, and then um, a couple, just a couple of others here. What is, the, uh, what is the advantage of the Creative Cloud for Education under the VIP program? Is there a difference between that? So Creative Cloud for Education is really just a naming um, mechanism that we use to, to designate it as being separate from the commercial offering. Um, there is no difference, though, as far as the functionality of the products. It's just that in, in the education space, we have, for example, device license. We don't offer that for our commercial users. Um, but the functionality of the products, so all the products that are available, Creative Cloud is the same, all the services that are available, it's just really a, a different naming function and um, the pricing, obviously, that's available. Okay, great. And to be eligible, uh, one thing I didn't cover, to be sure. eligible, um, a nonprofit um, customer would need to be a 501c3 customer. And so I know that CCB is um, obviously very well-versed in um, how to qualify a customer, but that's, uh, that's really the designation we, we look to. Yeah, that's, a, that's an important point. Thank you. Um, and then the last question that I have here is, uh, what's the best way to order Creative Cloud? Well, the best way to order, I think, is for you to call, for, for your customers to, to reach out to your CCB account manager, um, get a price quote and have a discussion about um, Creative Cloud, and um, then place your order through, through CCB. Now, one, thing, one, point I will, I will, um, one point I will make is the first step is for you to enroll in VIP. I mean, you, you don't need to even place an order yet, just um, CCB, you know, let your account manager know that you're interested, and CCB will um, send an invitation for you to join the VIP program, at that point, you're set up to actually start inviting your own staff, your, your team members to um, Creative Cloud. So they can literally, once you invite them, they receive an email um, welcoming them to Creative Cloud. They get set up in that very day. They can actually start deploying. Now, within, um, they can deploy the product even before you've purchased, the customer's purchased, um, if it's named user. Now, within 30 days, um, you will the customer will, you will need to place an order with CCB, but that's, a, that's basically how it works. Yeah, and in fact, once the, uh, if I understand it correctly, once the customer uh, invites somebody, uh, adds that license to their, to their VIP agreement, then we get notified and, and uh, Correct. Work, with the, work, with, work with the customer at that point to uh, get the order placed. Yep. Very good. Well, Thank you, Elaine. This has been fantastic. We really appreciate it. And I want to thank everybody for joining us today. We hope that you've learned a lot. Uh, and again, as we've said, if you have any further questions, please uh, contact your sales manager.